at the White House. Thank you. And let's get more now with CNN chief political analyst Gloria Borger, CNN political commentator Peter Beiner, contributing editor for The Atlantic and The National Journal, as well as CNN military analyst, retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtleen. He is former commander of the U.S. Army Europe, and he was also uh, he also served as director for war plans on the joint staff during the 9-11 terror attacks. Peter, to you first. You heard Dianne Feinstein may be too cautious, she said, of President Obama. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. I think before we uh, launch attacks again in, in Syria, which is far different than doing it in Iraq, because we have a hostile government and our allies on the ground are much weaker and harder to discern, we have to be able to answer the question, if we bomb ISIS from the air, who's going to take the territory on the ground? Can we be sure it won't be Bashar Assad's forces? Can we be sure it won't be other jihadist forces? After all, al-Qaeda has another affiliate in Syria. That's the al-Nusra Front. We've been told by the Obama administration for quite a few years now that, that the moderate rebels are very weak. If someone can make a good case that our bombing will empower the people we want it to, to empower, that's great. But I actually haven't heard very many people making that case compellingly yet. What do you think, General Hurtling? Well, I, I don't think indiscriminate bombing is a good idea in any event. Uh, but I think there's, there's a belief that we can just drop bombs and things will get better. The question is, what are the targets? Uh, we know we would like to destroy or defeat ISIS, but where are they? Would we like to go after the town of al-Raqqa? If we do, we have to remind ourselves that's a city of 250,000 people, the majority of which do not believe in what ISIS is doing uh, also. So it's very difficult, and, and I think the simplistic approach to this of just dropping bombs is very wrong-sided. And there you have it, Gloria, Peter and the general laying out a lot of what President Obama is getting counsel on, and you see him not really wanting to put a decision out well, there yet. You know, he's got a cabinet that's clearly conflicted about this. He personally is clearly conflicted about this, Definitely. and we see that play out. And then you have an American public that's also conflicted about it. You know, more than half of the American public, Brianna says, that this president is not a strong leader when it comes to foreign policy. On the other hand, more than half of the American public does not want to uh, get involved in any kind of a, a situation with Iraq. So, you know, the American public is conflicted, too. So it's a very difficult decision for the president. I think now in the NATO meeting, he's going to have to take a leadership role, not only on Ukraine, but also on ISIS. We've heard David Cameron talking about ISIS. Uh, now, and uh, I think the president, David Cameron, uh, ought to have a meeting of the minds here about just what they're willing to do in terms of airstrikes, uh, as, as well as uh, the NATO allies. What do you think, General Hurtling? The president will be speaking to NATO leaders. How important is it for him to come out of that summit with some sort of commitment from his allies? There, there are going to be some interesting discussions at the NATO summit, Brianna. There is going to be the discussions of Ukraine and Russia. There is going to be the question of Eastern versus Western Europe. There is going to be the discussions of rebels coming uh, through the, the rat lines back into Europe, the things that the U.K. is most concerned about. This is going to probably be the most intense and interesting NATO summit in the last 20 years. And, and it's pretty fascinating, Peter, because before the president goes to the NATO summit, he goes to Estonia. And so this will be his place uh, to, in a sense, speak to neighbors of Ukraine who are looking at Ukraine, worrying that they may be next. What does his message need to be uh, on that first leg of the trip? I think his message there is a message to Russia, which is don't even think about it. Uh, don't even think about trying to subvert the territorial integrity of countries that are already part of NATO. And this is absolutely very necessary for the United States. The United, the, we have to make it absolutely clear that we will defend those members of NATO, because if we leave any ambiguity and Russia tests us, then Obama has to go to the people of the United States and, you know, guess what? We're on the hook to defend the border between Estonia and Russia, at which point most Americans will say, where the heck is the border between Estonia and Russia, and how do we get on the hook to defend it? Which is precisely why I think they have to do a really good job of deterrence beforehand so we don't see happening in NATO countries what we've seen in Ukraine. The president has been stumbling recently on foreign policy, and he has just so many issues to deal with right now. When you look, Gloria, at this week ahead, how important is this for him to try to get his foreign policy back on track? You know, he he can't get his messaging back on track until he has a strategy that he can talk to the American people about, as Peter was, as Peter was saying. So before 
you know, he has to figure out what he wants to do, tell the American people why it is important for our own national security interests, and then he's got to do it. And hopefully he'll have some uh, allies with him al along the way, because he's made it very clear, Brianna, as you know from listening to him, he's not going to do something alone. Yeah, and we'll see him really fighting to win some people over, and then we'll see if he's actually able to this week. Gloria, thank you so much. General Hurtling, appreciate you being with us. Peter Beinert as well. Thank you. Thank you. And just ahead.